What is up people? Today we are going to get a new CB radio. I haven't actually had a CB in a little bit uh, because my last one just wasn't working. So we're gonna go to the local CB shop over on 131 by the truck stop. And today's pretty much just gonna be installing that. And then I'm probably gonna drop my trailer. I'm, I might actually do that now and just take my truck to the CB shop because they need my truck there, obviously. So yeah, that's what I'm gonna have to do. See, we figured it out live together, right on. So there's my truck and I am gonna drop my trailer and then I'm gonna drive, I'm gonna leap park my van and then I'm gonna drive to the CB shop and get that hooked up. He said he could do it around and it would only take an hour. I'm gonna get the one that is in the link in the description of my video, of this video and of every video. I believe it's a Bearcat 30 watt, a new one. So I think it's a couple hundred bucks. And then I think it's like, they charge like $85 an hour to install. Just crazy, man, to install a, what's this guy doing? Oh, let's not crash into each other. It's crazy, $85 an hour to install a CB radio. And that's more than some truckers are getting paid locally. So when I haul the farm stuff, the farm waste, I get paid 150 to $200 an hour. So in that scenario, it makes sense. But to think that installing a CB radio, you can make as much as you can driving a truck is crazy, man. Let's go start this bad boy. It's like a septic guy or something. Ugh. And I gotta send that pre-pass back. Otherwise they're trying to charge me $100 and a bunch of other fees. But if I send it back, they won't charge me anything and I can cancel it because I started a new by uh, way station bypass service that you guys probably know. It's called DriveWise and it's all on the phone. It's an app. So I'm, I've been trying that out. I'm in the test period. If I don't like it, then I'll get a new one. Or I mean, I'll go back to pre-pass. I'm just gonna, all you, subscribers are telling me to start using my hammer to test the air pressure so i listen i'm gonna drop this trailer anyways i don't know what the heck that is it's a beautiful day to be trucking i gotta clean out my trailer too man it's icky yucky it needs to be swept out i'm trying to just get things in order before i start these flowers so it's probably gonna be pretty busy here for next month or so month and a half for the summer or i mean the spring not much of an oil leak yay we need an oil change too so that I'm gonna do tomorrow. Do a PM oil change. And then I also gotta go get a truck GPS. All right. So we got the truck warmed up on this beautiful sunny day in Michigan. Now we're gonna go over here and park at the McDonald's parking lot. And we're gonna drive like eh, 15 minutes, 10 miles down the road to, you guessed it, we're getting the new CB radio, man. I'll be honest. I'm a bit indifferent about CB radios, man. Um, they're super helpful and definitely, I think, a necessity as a trucker. But when I was over the road, I stopped using my CB radio. In fact, I even took mine out and sold it because I just got fed up with the bull crap, man. A lot of the guys, they're funny and entertaining, but man, it gets old real quick. Uh, but as I grew older and more mature in trucking and became, you know, after a few years, now what, six or seven years, I realized it's super important to have one because just to uh, skip all the bull crap and crap talking that goes on there on uh, the trucker talk, they're just bored and trying to have fun probably and, and picking on people. It's really important to have it for weather and really bad traffic backups and cops, DOT, if they're having, um, if the DOT are doing a, if they're setting up places and trying to catch people going down the highway speeding or just, if they're, I forget what they call it, but anyways, it's really good to have for alerts and to get heads up on the weather and the roads and traffic and accidents and all that good stuff. So if you don't have a CB, I suggest you get one just for that. And like, especially in winter weather when the roads are horrible, like Google Maps isn't gonna tell you everything you need to know. The app Waze isn't gonna tell you everything you need to know. CBs are always on point. There's always a trucker around. So you have it on that 
tuned into that station and truckers will let you know there will be sure there'll be a lot of bull crap talking going on but if you can just turn it down for a little while and we're going to get us a cb radio and let's go yeah i gotta i gotta drop my trailer because i'm not gonna bring my truck and trailer over to the cb shop i'm it could take an hour or so so i might be there for a little while Where's my little trailer pulley thingy? There it is. Apply the trailer brakes. Remove the airlines. I've pulled these out before and that sucks. These things got a low and a high gear and sometimes they're a pain in the butt. Ugh. Good. And we'll pull our fifth wheel lever. This thing is such a pain in the butt sometimes to get into gear. I think the clutch might be going out. <laughs> Before I go to the CB radio shop, I'm gonna try going to Taco Bell in my truck. Do you think we can actually pull up to the drive-thru? I don't know. No semi truck parking. You see that? No semi truck parking. Uh oh. Let's try to get some Yokiato Taco Bell in the truck. Oh, some people are like, dude, get out of here, bruh. Okay, yeah, I don't think. I don't know, man. Oh, man. Nine foot clearance. Yep, we can't make it. You better back her on up. Come on, Chris, you should have known better. Well, you, sometimes you get places that don't have any of those clearance dividers, like stoppers, and you can squeeze it in there in a truck. So it is what it is. I'm just going to park. I'm going to take up these three spots. No, maybe. I don't know. I think either way, people are going to hate me. Try to get up tucked up in this little parking lot spot as much as I can so I can be out of everybody's way. Know what I mean? And then we'll go get our tacos, yokiados. And... All right, just leaving Taco Bell and I, <laughs> I hope I can get myself out of here. I kind of got myself in a pickle. I'm gonna kind of back myself into a corner here trying to Pull my dang truck through a drive through at Taco Bell. What are you thinking, Chris? Got to be constantly looking in these little parking lots that are not made for trucks. 
But we tried. At least we tried. A for effort, right? Posted. No trespassing. Keep out. Probably should have parked right there. In a semi truck, you always want to park away from the crowd. You guys already know that. All right, I believe we're right here. At, oh, there it is, 131 CB Radio Shop. I used to have a buddy. His sign is still up there. I wonder if he's still running that place. It says he's there. It's called Signature Truck Lines. I remember when he started that, but it looks, I don't know, man. I don't know if he's still there or not. Interesting. His sign's still there. I can't imagine he's paying for something that he's not using, because these commercial buildings, they are not cheap. Oh, well, let's take the curb up. So I'm trying to park. These guys just told me to kind of... I think they thought I was going to turn around. I'm just trying to uh, get a CB radio installed. I'm not sure if they were the CB guys. I doubt it. Yeah. We're kind of sketchy parking situation right here. But All right, let's go get the CB. Okay. have to get one of them uh, visors. So these I these guys are the pros I, right here. Yeah. Are you the owner of this shop? Yeah. Yeah. And this this is this is the man right here. Yeah. He's the installer. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna get down. Let you be. I'm gonna go get the ladder. I'll be right back. Good idea. You said it's Porky, right? Yeah, times four. So, uh, you are you doing a new antenna, or do you think that'll be good? No, we're just tuning this one in. He took all my tools. Oh man. With with that mirror being like bouncy, is that gonna affect my signal? Yeah, the receive. Yes. So what do you think I should do about that? Get a new mirror or adjust it? A lot of times guys take this screw out. There's a bird perch that goes in. And then the mount goes on that. Then you just kind of aim it forward because these ones are too far in the cavity. Yeah. For the uh, mount to stick on the bird perch. So let me ask Bear a couple things, see what he says. Okay. But yeah, that being loose is gonna really affect the ground. The okay. Ground plane. You took all my tools. Man. I got you. Oh, man. I want you to have the nine and the. Do you guys do you guys think I'll get enough signal with that mirror bouncy still? Yes, it'll hear? work. Okay. Just, there's not a good answer for that other than eventually you're gonna have it replaced anyways and then it's fine. Okay. Can I go check out these radios? Sure, go ahead. This place looks super cool too. <laughs> well, we just made it old school on stuff we had. Yep. Oh, yeah. Like a retro style. Well yeah. Too expensive to make it look like radio shack. Hey, man, look at this. <laughs> oh, that's the general console base that whole right setup. here. Yeah. Oh, the general console base. So people used to use this. Yeah, that's a. That's, uh, I'm selling that. That's like thousand dollars. Wow. That whole setup, you know, the whole package deal. Is a thousand. Yeah, that's a big dog radio. That looked nice in a 389 p well, you know, normally they'd have that on the desk at, at home. Yeah. But not where the wife would be complaining about all the wires. See how it has, like, clean look. Sometimes yeah. people got stuff hooked up and there's wires everywhere. Yep, yep. Oh, yeah. Nice. America. Okay. Somebody, make a, somebody made a wrap up there. Oh, so you want to go down. Okay. Yeah. Show it ahead to go down. Here's this. And let's do it. Well, let's give it a little bit up. Just somebody right there. I think it needs about right there. This is Porky's humble abode. Oh my goodness, you got this. Did you do all this? Yeah. This trim? Yeah, time Holy crap, man. What? Yeah, Dude. This. This oh my pulls goodness. Pulls out and turns that way. This is TV. sick. Got this pulls fire, out? Yep, got the fireplace. That's a bad, that's oh. all high end uh, diesel pusher furniture out of a crash out of Napa Knee. Are that's you high kidding end, uh, me? metal furniture for RV. What? Well, that ain't no wood, using no lumber. Bed. How no. do you get this? 
But we had to drive all the way down to Napanese the suburban. and brought it back to my suburban. <laughs> Napanese. Two years ago, before we bought this, he's wondering, what the hell are you going Dude, I love is this. Is this a bad boy or what? This you is get up bad. In there. Get this is in better there. than trucks, man. So. I got this to lift up the motorcycles to bring them in or the e bikes. You and know, he whichever. got a cart for a kid. <sighs> yeah, uh, pull around the e bikes. See, a racing car. That is sick. That, and then you got the fridge there. Yeah, that top thing I got for my wife. She's got a little stove. Oh. Right here, a little oven, a little uh, grill, a griddle, whatever you call those fry pans or whatever. Yeah. And she's the only one that drinks coffee. So. Oh, you don't drink coffee? Uh, I drink Mountain Dew, but. Man, this is nice, dude. Yeah, we you, still got you, a little bit. We got to do that trim side. Do you live in this? No, not yet. N not yet. You will, though. Yeah, yeah, pretty soon. You got a house that you're going to sell or something? Yeah, at moments. Uh, mom passed. Dad's oh, yeah. just about to. And I don't want that big house. Yep. It's just me yep. and my wife and a kid. I don't need that house. Yep. It is too much for Man. taxes. And how, how many miles does this rig have? Oh, uh, I guess so. All right, all right. We're just leaving the CB shop, and we are good to go with this uh, Bearcat 30 edition cb radio just kind of a basic mic which kind of sucks but it is what it is i'll get i'll get a nicer one and i'm not trying to pimp this truck out really this is just my daily runner and i'm gonna get a you know i'm gonna be looking for a pete or a kenworth but hey it works can i get a radio check Well, nobody wants to answer me, but she works. And like I was saying, I mean, it was kind of expensive, man, to be honest with you. Like, I probably could have spent my money better elsewhere. But it's all good. Uh, it was like almost, it was like $270, I think. Good truckers will let you know. Sound pretty clear to me, boss. Thank you. I'm gonna go up in here and get that. This is that automatic truck wash. They also got some, they got they got a trucking company, like a flatbed, he heavy hauling, low boy company. They're, they're doing big things here. And then they got the automated truck wash. Well, hopefully I can find my card. We'll roll through this bad boy again. So we got the green light. And we gotta follow these yellow lights like last time. That one will turn yellow when I can pull up. But for now I stay right here. Once I see that yellow light, there we go. We can pull up to the next one. Oh man. Oh fudge, my window. Dude, I almost got sprayed. All right, so then we hang out right here. It's pretty cool though. A automatic truck wash and then that yellow light so we can pull forward. And pull up to this one. It's kind of jumping around a little bit. Is this thing even working, man? Oh, okay. Here comes the, the waterfall. This is this is the crazy part. I don't know. At first I thought it was cheaper than the Blue Beacon, but it's not. It's like the same price. Oh shoot, tripping. When it goes through this monsoon part, it's hard to see the yellow lights. Everything is automated though. It's a pretty high pressured system.
can't see jack squat though that's the scary part kind of get disoriented i want to make sure my whole truck gets dry The drying part's kind of not perfect, but see if it got the back of my cab nope it didn't gosh dang it that's gonna need to be scrubbed I had to get some of this uh, fifth wheel grease I mean, I didn't have to, but I like the red and tacky. It works really good. You just slap it on the fifth wheel and then you back into your trailer and she's all lubed up. You know, if you don't lube up your fifth wheel on a regular basis, it like, it's like dry, it's grinding on, like if, you're too, if your shoulder bone was, or your knee was grinding on just bone and bone, that's what it's like, metal on metal. And I think it causes like grooves, grooves in the, in, in the plate, in the fifth wheel plate, so. I try to, every time I unhook from my trailer, I try to grease her up. This is the, one of the, really the only main truck stop in Grand Rapids area. I mean, there's a bunch of little ones like where I park at, but this is the 76th Street truck stop. Any of you watching my channel have probably been here in Michigan because if you came to Grand Rapids, then you likely stayed here for your 10 hours, your 34 hours. I just wanted to see some pretty trucks. But all I see is Volvos, Freightliners, and Ca uh, Cascadias, Volvos. I mean, there's some Peterbilt 579s and stuff like that. back to the yard to my trailer gonna hook up to it and call it a day i not like i did anything i didn't even work but there's a couple things that i had to do like get that cb radio and then i got a truck wash maybe i should have waited for my trailer too but trailer's kind of dirty as well and it's a beautiful day out and we got some things done Hopefully we can find some work. I was on the load boards today looking for some work, but there just ain't nothing. It's a pretty Kenworth. 